So far, we've discussed a few of the different tools Win-Win has at her disposal to help us in our struggle with Moloch. But we haven't really thought through how diverse cultures, values, and sensitivities play a role in this process. Perhaps the most pressing question for us to consider is who gets to decide the most critical aspects of alignment? Who are we aligning to? One scary thought is that Moloch has already infected many earlier AI systems and is on pace to do the same with these golems. Most written language, most people in power, most definitions of right versus wrong have come from a single group historically, men, and mostly ethnically white European men. And who do you think is leading the charge on the golems? This bias in data and design has shown itself a powerful tool of mostly unintended oppression. Whether it's the scrapped Amazon hiring AI which favored white men, or even worse, the Compass debacle, where AI was being used to make decisions around incarcerated individuals predicted recidivism in deciding their early release. I don't think I have to tell you which race consistently got favorable treatment. AI has a unique and sneaky property where it can use data to accurately predict something. Many have referred to these technological powers as a type of oracle, a teller of prophecies. I would like to argue that it is, but in a way that harkens back to the mythological concept and stories associated with the power. So what is the prophecy archetype in myths? Pretty much every culture has an instance in their religion or folklore of someone who can tell the future. Typically, the protagonist runs into this fortune teller and they are given a vague but powerful prediction. For example, in the story of Oedipus, King Laius of Thebes is told by the Oracle of Delphi that any son he bears will kill him one day. So the moment he has a son, Oedipus, what does he do? Orders him killed to protect himself. Except, instead of being killed, baby Oedipus is saved by the man who is supposed to kill him, unable to carry out the horrible act of infanticide. If you haven't heard the story before, I'm sure you know more or less how it ends. Oedipus grows up never knowing who his true parents are, returns to Thebes, and on the way, runs into King Laius. More accurately, King Laius runs into Oedipus, almost flattening him with his chariot. Unaware of his true father's identity, Oedipus and King Laius get into a fight, and Oedipus kills him. Prophecy fulfilled. The story really goes off the rails from there, but for the purpose of this blog, and assuming most people have heard the story, the point I'm trying to make at that moment of prophecy fulfillment. The oracle makes a prophecy, but in doing so, it influences the actions taken by the one receiving the prophecy. If King Laius never talked to the oracle, would he have tried to have his baby son murdered? The idea here, and the lesson in almost every prophecy parable, is that when we try to use predictions to shape the future, we might inadvertently create the future we are trying to avoid. People are already referring to some golems as oracles that can help us make decisions. And some have already done so, like in the case of Compass. The issue is that these probabilities are being determined from a corrupted data set, one filled with our most deep seated biases and expressed in decisions that have real consequences for individuals. The people facing these consequences are typically not the ones creating these systems and therefore do not have a say in these powers of prediction. 
In addition to these sticky issues, there is another one which we must contend with, which enhances the dangers of biased predictions, leading to the predicted outcome through our observation of it, which further reinforces the model's predictions. It becomes a literal self-fulfilling prophecy.